I just finished building and filming the modern coffee table for MM Wood Studio for my online school. And this is what my assembly table looks like right now. It's got the woodpecker's flattening mill on top of it. And I've got nowhere to store any of this. I, nowhere. I, I don't have a big shop. I don't have a ton of uh, storage in the shop. So in this video, what we're going to do is build a cabinet specifically to help store this as well as some of my Festool products that I've been slowly getting. So what we're gonna do is take some measurements, figure out what this cabinet needs to look like, and then break down some plywood. So let's get started. So I brought some stuff over and I spent a little time trying to figure out how to do this. I've only got one sheet of four by eight plywood and I have a bunch of other scrap plywood around here, three quarters of an inch thick as well. So I didn't wanna buy two sheets of this because I knew I have enough stuff here. So the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to make this, I drew on this, 34 inches wide. It's going to have three pieces, of course the outer edges, and then this divider here. And they're going to be uh, 13 inches deep. And that's going to allow me to get three pieces out of this sheet. And then I need a top and a bottom, of course. I've got some other three quarter inch plywood around the shop that I'm going to pull the top and the bottom out from and that will give me the basic structure of the cabinet. I started with breaking down a larger 4x8 sheet first with a cut at 27 inches. That will allow me to have an easier time to rip three pieces down to 13 inches wide. Now after I rip those three pieces, then I move on over to another piece of plywood I have sitting around, which is a roughly 4x4 piece. And so I'm ripping it 13 inches wide. And then the last piece, I cut the 13, but it's gonna be a shelf I put on the wider side, and it's going to be cut at 12 and a quarter inches wide. Now that I've ripped all of that, now I'm going to cut my top and bottom pieces to width. And that's the 34 inches that we're shooting for. Now eight feet tall for a cabinet is really tall. So what I've done is I brought over the fence from my saw stop against the edge of the outfeed support for my crosscut sled. I also had that piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood again clamped to the fence. So here I'm gonna be taking off roughly 13 and a half inches. So I've got one corner clamped down and I came in and I drew a line an inch and four and a half inches down and then I drew a line signifying roughly where halfway is between the width of this three quarter inch piece of plywood. Now what I'm going to do is drill a hole into each one of these spots. Starting with the top though, I'm going to drill a hole into the top, sink a screw in so that this will stay nice and square. And I'm going to come down and then I will square up this next one, drill a hole in, countersink the hole, and then drive in my screw and then work my way down. And then I'll continue that process until I got the two sides all attached. Basically, I played around with everything a little bit, and this here, this outer edge for the piece, will give me relatively even amounts on both sides and enough room for a sustainer here and to hang up the sled over here and then put my pieces. So I'm gonna go here with this. It's a little bit off of my original measurement, but it, it satisfies everything. Um, now, the other thing is I want to have just one door, right? And I can't do that with this here. I'd have to make um, a set of double doors and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take this piece over to the table saw and rip off three quarters of an inch. And then after realigning everything, did the exact same thing. I just started two inches down from my screw facing the front of the cabinet four and a half inches and four and a half inches for the other one and then one inch from the bottom and screwed all four of those in. I then turned everything around so it would be facing the camera and first screwed in my two sides to the bottom and then I went and I just double checked my measurement for how far in the divider plywood should be. I start with the top move down. 
Now, since I don't want this cabinet to be on wheels, unlike other cabinets I have here in the shop, like the one I have over near the joint or planter combo machine, um, it doesn't move. I got this two by three piece of select pine here. I'm going to cut this so it's just a few inches short on each side of what this width is here on the bottom, which is 34 inches. Then I'll clamp the front piece an inch and a half down from the top and an inch in from each side. And then I'm gonna attach it from the inside into it. So take the same screws I've been using and just drill them in this way instead. Then I'm gonna transfer my clamps to the back piece and I have it just about maybe an eighth of an inch from the back. And drill in four lag screws that I can use as levelers for this cabinet. I got the cabinet off the assembly table and I put onto some concrete over here and I started playing around with where I want everything. And I think I came to the conclusion that um, on this side where I have the Festool sustainers there and this piece here, uh, the carriage for the milling jig, I want them all actually in the same spot instead of maybe over here. And then over here, I'll do the vertical rails and the track. So I'm gonna take some measurements where everything is. Now on this side where the Festool sustainers are gonna be and the very top where the carriage will be, here I am going to put one floating shelf. I'm gonna drill some holes that are quarter inch in diameter with this system and that yielded me some very nicely placed holes for my floating shelf. And then I brought over some leftover three quarter inch plywood from breaking everything apart and I brought that up to the cabinet and I marked the edge so I can cut this to the correct width for the fixed shelf and with another piece I do the same thing for the floating shelf. And then after bringing my lines into the inside of the cabinet, I did the same thing I did before, drilled some holes on both sides and attached my fixed shelf just like I would have attached the tops or the bottoms to the side. After those are attached, I then flip the cabinet over, take a measurement for the width, then head over to the table saw, and then I take just about a sixteenth or so off the width of that measurement and rip that at the table saw. And then I brought that over to the cabinet, positioned it, and found out what the final length I need to cut is. I then flip the piece over and I use some cutoffs from my pieces of plywood to prop that up above the cabinet. And then I use my track saw to cut this to length. And then I flipped the back over and got everything in position so I could attach the back to the cabinet. To start work on the door, I took a measurement in three spots for the width of the cabinet inside of the frame. And then I headed over to the table saw and cut my quarter inch sheet of MDF to that width minus just a little bit. And then off camera, I measured for height. I set up my track saw and I made that cut. I decided that before I hung the door, what I wanted to do was to get a couple of these fixtures I was gonna make to hold both the sled and the rails. And if another piece of three quarter inch plywood I came in and set up the four different rails in position so I can take this piece back to the table saw, cut everything up, and create dividers for myself. Now this gave me an idea of what the depth would be, and I decided that I actually wanted five pieces here instead of four. So I just add an extra three quarters of an inch to the width of this, and then cross cut that at the table saw. And then with the remaining piece, of this three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, I cross cut five pieces three inches wide. With everything cut, I then head over to my assembly table, put some glue on one end of each divider, and brand nailed it in. And then I drew some pilot holes for my number eight one inch screws. I did those actually through the back because my bit can't reach the front. And if my screws pre-started, I held my piece up to the divider and drove them in. 
Now what I want to do is critical pieces to help me hang this sled for the router mill. The first thing I'm going to do is cross cut two pieces to 15 inches wide. Then I'm going to come back and rip them both to 8 inches in width. Now the two pieces I cut, I took one to the bottom, and then of my square I set it so it was three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the red aluminum to the bottom of the piece. And I did the opposite on the other side, making sure it was three and a quarter inches from the top. And then I had two pieces of plywood which happened to fit really well between the two rails and they were left over. And I took my pencil and I transferred a line. Now this is right here. Right, the end of this red, and this is going to come out about a quarter of an inch from where I dip in, draw a line, and that will account for the round curve right here. And then I'm going to take my square, so it's an inch and four, three eighths that is. I'm going to draw a line inch and a half down from the top. And then we don't really need all that. So what we can do get a piece like this. And now this will be my fence on the front. And now what I can do is come in here with my bandsaw. And what I'm going to do is remove this material right here. So boom, boom, boom. Here's that other piece that's left over. That's a really nice width. And it's going to go here and provide support. However, I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to mark where the supports, plus a, about an eighth of an inch maybe. Then I'm going to take the square, set it down and get a depth. Then I'm going to take that depth and just subtract an eighth of an inch. I'm going to come over here and draw a line. So all of these X's, this area here, this will all get removed at the bandsaw. We will attach a little piece of plywood. And then I just brought a couple of my scrap pieces over to I just cut. Make some marks, transfer those over, and then make cuts of the bandsaw, get them to length to become the holder for the shelf. And then for this piece I have this a little bit too long, I can transfer what will be the shelf piece, its location over, and then remove this weight. First with some glue and some brads, I'm going to attach these little stopper pieces to the end of the hook. Once he's dried for a little bit, I've brought it over to my piece. What I'm going to do is draw the rest of my pencil lying around this piece of plywood. And now I know where I can drill some holes. I've already got that rough shape here already, so I'm going to do the same thing. Five screws in total. I first start by drawing the pilot holes that will attach the shelf or the hook to this larger piece. I then drill four holes, two in the bottom, two on the top, onto this larger piece, and I'll use those to attach this to the back of the cabinet. I countersink the holes from the top and the bottom, flip the piece over, and I countersink the holes from the back. Now I'm going to put some glue on the connection part of the shelf, not too much, but some. Drill and drive a screw. Sorry if this is hard to see, but what I'm doing is I brought over my top piece and I'm using it to help lift up this sled. And once I get to the height I want, I'm going to drill some holes, drive in my screws, and get it hung. And then I attach the bottom shelf to help release some of the weight from the top. After shortening the screws so they don't go through my piece of half inch MDF, then I can screw my hinges in. I start with a top and a bottom hinge, two inches from the bottom and two inches from the top. And then I took a three feet long straight edge, butted it up to my bottom hinge, 
and use that to help me locate where I would put the center hinge. And now I'm going to draw a line 5 eighths of an inch in from the outer edge of the cabinet. And then I'm going to draw a line square 2 and a sixteenth of an inch up. And then with one of my hinges, I will attach that to the side of the cabinet, drilling holes so it's nice and square to those lines. And now it's time to hang the door. So what I've done, which you can't see, it's off camera, is I have a number of boards of plywood in various thicknesses to lift the door up and get it pretty much in line with the bottom hinge inside the cabinet. I'll install a magnetic stopper so the door closes right where I want every time. With the door on, the handle screwed on, it's time to put some finish on this door to match the rest of the cabinets in my shop. I started this video wearing a hat, I'm going to finish the video wearing a hat. So the amber shellac, it is going to uh, dry and then a lot of these streaks here will just disappear and over time of course they'll just all fade into much more of a uh, uniform orange here and I really love uh, finishing off the doors like this. This MDF is very stable, it's not going to move, it's not going to expand and contract either as the moisture levels here change and uh, it's relatively cheap and inexpensive to make a door especially of this size. So let's open it up. Here on the right hand side on the very top I've got the router sled on its two special shelves that I made. Below that I have the Festool Domino and I have a, a sustainer of dominoes in it and then below that I have the router base. Uh, if I need to add some more Festool products I can rearrange a little bit and get some extra room in here for sure. On the left hand side I've got the track for my track saw. I only have two of them right now. And on the right hand side I've got the rails for the slab flattening mill. There's four of them in total. And uh, below that is the train track saw and I have some hardware um, above that for the flab, slab flattening mill. I have a couple more videos that are very similar to this where I'm building other cabinets here in the shop. I built some hanging cabinets, I'll have a link to that in the description below, as well as a link up here in the cards. I'll do the same thing for the rolling cabinet that I built as well. I'll put a link for that below and then up here in the cards. The construction techniques are virtually the same for each one of these. It's maybe like a little series, I guess. A hanging cabinet, a rolling cabinets, and then a tall cabinet for your shop. Ways to help you organize your shop. Uh, which I've used over the years to help me organize my shop. And let me know how you guys organize your shop. Do you build cabinets on your own like this? Do you buy cabinets from like a big box store or what do you do? I'm curious, let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the like button, share your timeline, and head over to the MM Wood Studio page and like us there as well. Now, if you're watching this on IGTV, give us a follow, hit that like button, and as always, as always, as always, have a great week in your shop. Boo! Done! Place for everything! Yeah! Ooh, and the crowd goes wild! If you stuck around, I just want to say I'm jazz. And hopefully you'll build some cabinets to help store all your stuff because we're woodworkers and we need tools to make woodworking projects, right? And uh, that equals needing some storage. All right, we're out. Peace.